Welcome everybody to the Get Your New View podcast. I've asked Mark Rhodes, our Chief Strategy Officer, to join us here today to tell us a little bit about a customer success story with training. What kind of story have you brought for us today, Mark? Hello, Carrie. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm hoping we have a couple hours to do this because, boy, training, change management, equipping people to do better at their jobs, work less, work smarter, is something I've been passionate about for decades. And boy, I had a good time preparing for this interview, just thinking back through uh, all the experiences I've been through, training classes, helping people to train, leading training classes. And boy, uh, yes, I do have some stories. And so thank you for asking. And uh, yeah, let me share. Now, I know everybody else on the team you're talking to as well is going to talk about uh, training that they've done or, or experienced and, and outcomes that they've seen. And I've, I wanted to take a slightly different uh, perspective to that and share a particular training class that I was a part of that I think everybody will resonate with. It was uh, it was a few years ago and it was we were installing a, a new ERP system and it was classic training. And here's the interesting thing about the story too. The trainer was actually a really good he was a good trainer, but he just didn't know uh, really the proper way to go about training and the elements that you should include in adult learning principles and a lot of things that we include in our training approach that I'll touch on later. So it was, like I said, it was the classic situation. We piled into a room. We did have computers in front of us for eight hours a day, the full week, and we got a binder that was this thick and he said, okay, let's open up your binders and start going through this. Right. And it was, you know, introduction and navigation to the system and set up and this and that. And it was so bloody painful. Uh, you sit there and you're trying to keep, keep paying attention and trying to follow on the binder and make good notes. Cause you know, you're going to need to know this stuff. But meanwhile, you're staring outside and the mind's wandering and, you know, it doesn't take long at all before you're kind of nodding off and then you're looking for the Coke and <laughs> Coca-Cola, that is, and, and uh, you know, trying to make it through. And um, the interesting thing is I, I sat there and um, at, at heart, I'm an introvert and I didn't want to sit there and admit that I was having trouble following along. Um, because your mind starts wandering and you miss a key step and then pretty soon you're really not sure what's going on. And and how do you address that in the room of everybody? And what a waste of time that was, right? And and I, I I'm now with with retrospective, I know I wasn't the only one feeling that way in that room. And so, my gosh, what a shame to go through that kind of experience. And I bet just about everybody's gone through that kind of same kind of experience. So, um, the the importance of doing training right and taking into account uh, the right approaches and so forth so important. Not only for the for the benefits going and the outcomes going on, but just just making valuable use of the time, which nobody's got anymore. So, um, so that caused me to think about what's a what's a good training experience I've been through. Yeah. And uh, again, from a, a recipient standpoint, um, the the New View team went through the Microsoft Certified Training uh, last year. And here's the thing: we have a what, Carrie, ninety nine percent. Uh, customer satisfaction rate with our training classes already, right? Yep. We feel so strongly about the importance of training and making sure we are doing it the very best way. We invested, our team took them off, offline for, gosh, it was like three or four days total, I think, between all the homework and the pre-work and everything else in the classes to go through and uh, get our MCTs. And you know, I saw right away that being successful, even even as experienced as we are, we learned things. Uh, we adapted our approach to training after that, right? Um, in terms of just our overall approach and how we tell stories, um, making sure that we don't try to cram in too much. I think that's that's one thing everybody does. You know a lot about the system. You want to get it all out there. And we tried to do that, right? So we've we pulled back a little bit in terms of how much we include in the class um, to make sure that we get to this, the very specific things that are most important, make sure we have time to practice those things as we go through it. So a couple other things that came out of that, but um, that led me to, and I'm almost done with my stories, but that led me to 
since I think the majority of folks watching or listening to this don't have time to be doing research on adult learning principles and practicing training and knowing about Ebbinghaus's curve and, and all these elements that go into the, the science and, and the art of our approach. If anybody's taken a golf lesson out there or a ski lesson or a cooking lesson, something along those lines, it struck me that uh, a lot of the necessary elements in doing process and system training are included and it almost seems natural in those types of, of lessons. And so for a ski lesson, for example, I just went skiing yesterday and I was thinking back to, you know, when I first started learning, you're, you're in a group. So there's a little bit of networking going on. You get to know some of your, your fellow and they're, and they're all kind of at that same level. They're all wanting to learn and, you know, a little anxious about it. You've got an instructor that shows you it gives you the visual of what to do, right? How to change from a wedge to a parallel and so forth and the body mechanics involved. And then you get to practice, right? Right away. You see it and then you get to embody that and you get feedback right away as well. You, typical ski lesson, they show you, you ski down a little bit and then the instructor says, well, try that and try that, right? And you get to try that right away. And that's powerful stuff. Right. It seems so simple, but a lot of those core elements and those types of lessons uh, are what we include. And the other thing that struck me is, um, guess what? I guarantee you nobody out there has uh, taken one lesson and become a pro at it. It just doesn't work like that. Right. So you take a ski lesson and you get comfortable and then you are going to peak and then you're going to start forgetting things that you learned in that lesson. It's impossible not to. So if you want to advance beyond that and not slip back a little bit, you have to take another lesson. And um, that's one of the interesting things you think, well, I, I don't want to take the time. I just want to ski kind of thing. But you're not going to get better without that feedback and with that instru without that instruction. So um, hopefully those are <laughs> some interesting stories. But uh, like I said, I was thinking back over over all the time I've been doing training and uh, really brought back some some nice and some interesting, insightful memories for me. Yeah, that's fantastic, Mark. Yeah. You totally reminded me of a bad training experience I had uh, yeah. back when I was a manager. I arranged for some training, and this was not inexpensive stuff. This was a big deal for my team. And uh, we spent all the time putting together the curriculum and making sure that everything was exactly right. And the day that I showed up to make sure the room was all ready that yeah. morning before my team, yeah. Yeah. I walked in and I saw 10 piles of books that were yeah. literally more than two feet of books. Yeah. I wish I had taken a picture of that because that was an example <laughs> right? of, right? My heart just sank and I couldn't even imagine what my employees were going to think when they had to face their two feet of books for the week. So yeah, yeah. I uh, have definitely taken that one to heart with our training. Uh, we certainly don't do that with our students. And um, the ability to enact what you've learned right away is critical. And that's one of the reasons yes. why we spend 50% of time yeah, uh, but... for every class on hands-on. It's designed into the timing. It's designed into how we talk about things. It's designed into purposeful exercises to make sure everybody has a chance to practice what they learn right away. Uh, Cause you're right. Otherwise we all forget unless we get a chance to try it. Yes, exactly. Very cool. Who, who's um, ever walked into a room, seen those binders going, woo. <laughs> right? Yeah, nobody was cheering that like, day. Oh <laughs> yep. Yeah. So other than presenting people with a two-foot uh, stack of books, <laughs> yeah. what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see uh, companies making with training? Well, so uh, yeah, yeah, several things on that front. One, one of the things I think is it's hardest for it's hardest for us to communicate the value in is just the need of training. But so let me put it, let me put it this way. Um, to me, and I think anybody interested in improving, it's not a question of if to do training. It's a question of when do I do training? Here's the thing. I, I, I talked about skiing. Let's continue with that example, right? You, you're you're going to peak and you can get a little bit better on your own. But, but you know, even me, I, I've been watching some YouTube videos, right? learning about weight shift and, and the ski placement exactly during turns and things like that and proper body position. You, you can't get better just on your own. You're going to figure a couple things out, but you're going to peak, right? So for all the businesses out there that are interested in doing okay, 
maintaining status quo, maybe slipping back a little bit. Okay, have at it, right? It's it's basic science, which I'll talk about in a second. But if you want to move forward, if you want to improve your business, you want to get better, you want to get more efficient, you want to reduce errors, you want people to think process related, provide better service, all of those things. How are they going to do that unless you put effort into that? It's it's just a, a question of when. When do you want to do that training? And it can't be a one and done thing, obviously. Hopefully I've underscored that point through this. So that's that's the first biggest mistake. It's just really having the wrong mentality. It is a tremendous investment of time and money. You got to pull people off their day-to-day -day jobs. But again, if you want to get better, and hopefully a lot of businesses do, you have to go through these steps. So I think that's one of the biggest mistakes. Um, another one is just trying to fight basic human biology. We talked about uh, forgetting things, right? And the Ebbinghaus curve. And I think you're doing, uh, you're mentioning this in one of your other podcasts, Carrie. Yes. People forget. And again, this is, um, I don't think I have to prove this to anybody. Everybody probably realizes uh, you can't begin to remember what you had for dinner a couple nights ago, let alone what you learned about something a month ago, or two months ago, right? There's, there's brain drain, whether it's people get, uh, forget what they what they learned or they figure out a different way and it might not be the best way, whatever. They're not going to continue figuring out the best way and continue expanding their use of Business Central and NAV without some guidance. People nat naturally are going to do the job that they need to do, right? And then to go beyond that really have to be, they've got to either have that flexibility, that motivation, and nowadays, that's really tough to come by. We're just all super busy. You got to get the work out, right? And so you want them to get better. You got to you got to work on that. So people forget. People also, and I think this is pretty widely understood, have different learning styles. And you, when you do training, you have to account for those different learning styles. It's basic biology. You can't fight it. You have to adapt to it. So piling everybody into a room, showing them PowerPoint slides, giving them a binder, turning the lights down low, that's only gonna work for a fraction of the people in the room, period. And so one of the things that we do, of course, is we do account for all those different learning styles in our different approaches, how we go through it. So you can't you can't rely on just one approach and you have to understand the, the mechanics and the, and the biology involved with that. Um, the other thing, yes, I thought about this, and again, I think this is pretty widely accepted as science, is uh, people have a hard time learning under stress. And guess what? Normal jobs are pretty stressful. Pulling people off the line for a day to do training is stressful because they're thinking about that pile of work that they have to get back to. And that's just normal recurring re training, right? Think about when you're doing an upgrade or an implementation. That's stressful. You got your normal job. You're trying to get this project done. You got management concerned about time and budget and money, right? And and then they got to get this training done right away so you can begin testing. That's stressful. And so you better make sure the training works for them if you're going to try to accomplish it in those scenarios and in, in that perspective. So. Um, a couple other things I thought about. One is uh, don't forget about just basic change management principles when you're just um, trying to figure out your approach to training for your team. The, answering the question of why. Why do we need this training? So again, if people think I'm doing a pretty decent job, I know the system pretty well, I'm getting my work done decently, right? They've become immune really to better way to do things, to to the wasted effort that might be involved in a workaround, the duplication of, of work or the extra keystrokes that they're making, right? Really have to approach it from a why perspective. Why are we doing this training? Well, again, less errors, better customer service. We want to improve our business, develop new products, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure to, you uh, touch on the motivation. You know, in ski lessons, you're naturally motivated. You've signed up to be there. A lot of training in companies, you haven't signed up to be there. So you have to point out the motivation for them. And then that really helps them focus on, on what's important and getting through it. And um, well, just it also 
signals to them that as a manager, you're interested in investing in them as team members. When they know that, hey, I want to make us better, therefore I'm taking you off your normal job and investing this time and money in the training, people understand that, wow, that's an investment in me. And now I understand what we're trying to accomplish here. There's some shared goals involved. And I think that's that's pretty darn important. Um, oh, yeah. One other thing. I wanted to make sure I got through my list uh, because this is a pretty important part, too. I think a lot of people naturally assume, and this is, this is very understandable. This is not just basic science or anything like that. Very understandable that content experts make good trainers. No, no. Just because you know the system doesn't mean you know how to train on the system, right? So there are a lot of people that know a lot about us at the system, Business Central and Nav, but they are not good trainers. That's that's all there is to it. So just because they know the system doesn't make them good trainers. Training is very different. You naturally have to have good content knowledge, but it's it's a real skill that needs to be practiced. It needs to be learned. It needs to be improved, continuously improved. And again, there's a lot of science that goes into our approach. So from my perspective, you know, we've invested, I don't know how many, probably thousands of hours into how we train and our training programs and our curriculum classes that we have put together, thousands of hours. And so it just doesn't happen overnight. It takes takes a big concerted effort. And so don't just grab somebody off your team and say, hey, go ahead and train them. Now, they're going to get to know the system even better if you do that, but um, that's asking for an unsuccessful training class, quite frankly. And so uh, be careful of that. Yeah, good, good advice. Yeah, I see uh, a lot of companies who try the train the trainer approach, and if you don't have somebody who uh, truly enjoys training, uh, that's often not a, a good outcome with that. Right. Right. Yeah. So what are the things that you see that are uh, so different about training from NewView? Yes, and I, I get to talk to uh, a lot of Business Central and NAV users about this, and I love talking about this because I truly feel deep down, well, I should say beyond feel, I know, because I'm pretty familiar with training programs that other partners have and, and that I've seen elsewhere from other uh, providers. Um, we do have very distinct differences, um, and I'm going to call out just two, really. One is our real-world experience, and um, when I say that, I, we have an average of 15 years plus experience in Business Central and NAV, and we're all former users, right? So when you couple that together, we understand the, the folks that are in our training classes, we understand their jobs. We understand what's important to them. We understand exactly what they need to do in the system. Uh, a lot of a lot of places will just rely on the Microsoft curriculum. And Microsoft has a lot of training materials out there. And it's, it's good. They've invested a ton of time in putting these together. But it's not really from a real world perspective. It's very much, this is how you use the system. So it kind of steps you through. This is how you create a customer. This is how you create an invoice, right? Step by step. Those are important elements and we cover that of course, but we come at it from, of course, a very different perspective. And so we're going to talk about scenarios. We're gonna talk about situations, use cases is another popular term for that, right? And so when you need to um, you know, provide a credit or cancel an invoice or you, you, you have any one of these weird situations that comes up in a normal day in a business, we know exactly how to do that because we've done that just like them. And so pretty important to do that. Um, and of course, the adult learning principles, as I mentioned, right? So uh, chief among them, Carrie, you mentioned the hands-on exercises and how much time we spend on that. Uh, we provide gamification, which is a proven learning method and does make it fun. Um, but a lot of a lot of adults uh, from adult learning principle really thrive on that. Um, and, and certainly the, the networking, um, homework, right? We really account for all those different learning styles and modes of interaction. And it's been interesting, as you know, as we've transferred from in-person to virtual, how we've had to figure out and really uh, I, <laughs> trying to think of another word besides pivot, but pivot our training 
and and make it engaging uh, online, which we've been successful in doing, but we've had to rewrite all our classes to do that. Uh, so pretty important on all that. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah. One thing that all of our trainers come and talk to me about at some point, and usually it's after they've finished training, they're very excited, they've had a great time with their students, yeah. they come to tell us about the aha moment that they saw yeah. their students have in class. And that, that. that moment just brings me so much joy because exactly. right. that's the end result that we're really going for is that people get that that huge aha moment that gives them something to take back to work that they can apply immediately. So can you tell us about uh, one or two of those that you've seen? I tell you, we if somebody walks out of that room and doesn't have something they're itching to get back to their desk and do, we failed them, right? That's just part of our approach, almost our DNA of, of training. And uh, I don't think it's ever happened I, every time. We, uh, we get to the end of the day, we do takeaways. And you better believe that is just a powerful moment to hear uh, the, the biggest points of learning that folks have gotten during the class for that day. And it's really twofold, right? It's a it's a personal reflection and really bubbles up for them, but then also they get to hear everybody else's. And, uh, oh yeah, that's right, that too, right? And it kind of brings them back and reinforces uh, a lot of the concepts we went through. I'll never forget, it was, uh, it was Summit uh, two years ago, I guess it was. And I, I think it was the controller's uh, boot camp, and we got to the end of the day and we were doing the takeaways. And this is going to illustrate the point just beautifully. Um, <laughs> we start going around the room. Hey, what was your biggest takeaway today? Well, recurring, recurring journal entries. They weren't really sure what recurring journal entries were or the, certainly the power of it, right? Recurring journal. You know, that's not that big of a deal, quite frankly, right, in the system. It's, it's a pretty small feature. Doesn't on the surface seem like it's got all that much going on with it roughly but the first person said that then the second person said oh yeah recurring journal entries and i think almost everybody in the room said the exact same thing they kept piggybacking oh yeah recurring journal entries i can do this with it i can do that with it and it really struck me that's a that's a it's a small smallish feature in the system yet it is so powerful and the only reason that we covered it and covered it in the way we did and gave them examples so it really stuck in their mind about how they can use it in their particular situation is, again, because we've been in their shoes. We knew that's an important part to cover and you better believe we covered it. And sure enough, that was uh, that was huge, huge point of value. Um, I know at least one person said, you know, that that covered the cost of the training right there, that just that one point. And so that was that was a lot of fun to see. That was a good moment. Yeah, I remember that moment, Mark. That was fantastic. Yeah. Who knew yeah. we could get people so excited about journal entries? Exactly, uh, right? <laughs> but yeah, no, that was great. Well, yeah. fantastic. Those are some great uh, things that you've brought to share with our, our audience uh, for this episode. Thanks so much for joining us, Mark. Always, always enjoy it and uh, look forward to joining you again, Carrie. Thank you. I'm Carrie Peters. Thank you for tuning in to the Get Your New View podcast. For more episodes like this on YouTube, click the subscribe button and ring the bell to ensure that you get notified whenever there's new content coming out. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please share an honest review on Apple Podcasts. If you are ready to rethink today for tomorrow, look for the link below and contact us to speak with our expert team. You won't find the level of no-nonsense, real-world experience we offer anywhere else, and we're here to put that experience to work for you. Do you think you could use more features of your software if you just knew how? Are you frustrated with inefficiency that never seems to get better? Did your team ever really get good training to understand how to use your business software? Do you suspect that there just has to be a better way, but you don't know what that is? We believe every company can benefit from increased efficiency and higher utilization of their software, and that it's possible to have fun while learning exactly how to do that. The experts at NewView Strategies will tap into the true power of Dynamics Business Central and NAV for your company by helping you to rethink today for tomorrow. Please contact us at getyournewview.com to get started.